right. Uh, so the uh, the topic of my my today's lecture is what ideas can we borrow can FreeBSD borrow from AIX. Well, it's just a short, short disclaimer. I'm not saying that other BSD systems cannot borrow, but I'm most familiar with BSD, so I'm going to talk mostly about FreeBSD. And my name is Jan Szydnicki. You can find my, my email here. So, uh, what is this AIX thing? Uh, it's IBM's own proprietary uh, operating system that runs on proprietary IBM's hardware on power and power PC architectures. Well, there used to be uh, other ports for other architectures. I'm uh, aware of mainframes, but well, never mind that. The current versions run on only on powers. Uh, and this is this so-called commercial business enterprise uh, operating system, which means uh, it has strong commercial objectives. Unlike FreeBSD, it's not academic of any kind. Uh, but uh, while it's not developed by the open source community, it's quite advanced and the IBM has recently put quite a lot of focus on it. So it's quite interesting and has quite interesting features and uh, is quite advanced. The performance is pretty, pretty good. And um, when I started to use AIX, I was actually quite impressed that uh, the comments and uh, uh, options are remarkably, remarkably consistent, consistent, which means that uh, various subsystems have similar sets of comments and you actually uh, uh, can guess the right comment just knowing the other subsystem in the system. Okay, but the question is what and why to borrow? Uh, well. AIX is closed source and it's full of patents, so it's not anything that you can port directly from AIX to FreeBSD or to other BSDs. And you don't have any access to the source, you have only the documentation that IBM provides you. So there's no way to transport anything uh, directly from AIX. But, uh, well, of course you can use some of the ideas that are in the system. Uh, well, of course, taking into, into, into account the patents, while well, IBM has vowed not to uh, use its patent suit against open source communities, at least part of it, but, well, it, it, it will require some lawyer to make it clear. Uh, well, um, I don't see any point in comparing BSD system with AIX as the target market is totally different and the operating system is actually totally different and the, Hardware is totally different, uh, so well, I'm not going to get into any kind of advocacy here. Uh, I'm not going to say that this thing is in AIX is better or AIX is better than any BSD. It just doesn't make make any sense. Uh, well, but I'm going to tell you about a few things in AIX that really impressed me. Uh, as I, I used to be a FreeBSD admin, and now I work, work quite a lot with AIX. Mm. So, well, I, have, I had BSD habits and I found out that some things can be better than, than in BSD. Okay, so my main, focus would, would, is my main focus of this lecture would be system administration tools and interfaces that AIX provides that we can adapt, that we can take a look at and make, a, make them better in FreeBSD or anything. Uh, well, what I would like to uh, stress here that um, we can really take a good use of uh, what we have as a base system, uh, which means that uh, we have a, a pretty complete operating system along with tons of utilities, which are consistent with the kernel, co consistent with each other. With each other. So um, when we take and introduce another tool, we can keep it in sync with other utilities, with the kernel and stuff like that. So uh, I think uh, I cannot stress this more that the base systems help, help us here. And uh, most of the things I'm going to talk about uh, would be best if they would, would fit in the base system because they would be maintained all together with the main, 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 main system tree. Okay. Uh, so, well, um, as, a, as some background here, 
Uh, I, as I already told you, I have been working as a FreeBSD administrator, then AIX administrator. Uh, recently, I have been working at uh, the Comarch company, Comarch SR, and uh, what I did was to provide uh, system administration and maintenance services for external customers uh, with the uh, not exactly proper, properly maintained systems, uh, which means that they may have not been updated for a while, for a long while, uh, they may have been mistreated, well, they may well even have been broken in some ways, and uh, the tools I am going to talk about were proved quite helpful in fixing the problems, updating, well, reverting some changes and stuff like that. So uh, everything is here is, I'm not gonna uh, tell any marketing speech here. I'm not a salesperson. And all, all, all the tools here I actually found quite useful. And uh, well, I was happy that I have them. And well, I would actually would, would like to see them in FreeBSD. Uh, well, all that made the AIX quite resilient to mistreatment meaning that uh, only once I have seen a system that, I, that was unmaintainable and had to, be re had to be reinstalled. In all the other cases, I could upgrade the system, which could be even a few years old without any maintenance. Uh, uh, as I already told you, uh, that I cannot stress more the power of the base system here. Uh, uh, the idea is that uh, the base system can give you uh, the te well-tested, uh, very frequently used uh, tools, which are built in into the system, so you can rely on them. Rely on them because actually, um, there's uh, well, uh, there's not uh, nothing not going to be, to be anything very um, special about those tools. They are just convenient and they are just well-tested, so uh, it's harder to make any mistakes and it's easier to remember. Just when you have just one comment instead of, instead of quite a few ones. Uh, so uh, that's the idea. And my target in this lecture are actually developers and committers who would, actually, who would like to expand the system and, well, take inspirations from other systems. Uh, so I try to present the ideas in the way that I would also advocate them. Okay. So the main topics here. Uh, I'm going to talk about AIX device management. I'm going to talk about uh, administration interface called Smith. And I'm going to talk about a few tools, which are mostly actually shell scripts, but it doesn't matter, for upgrade, cloning, and archiving, which is package management, system, so-called system dump, MK, SysB, and root file system tricks with some alt disk something scripts. And I'm going to also talk about error logging. And we, if we have time, I'm going to show you some things live. OK, well, to be honest, the IAX has the coolest device management subsystem I have ever seen, in, at least in the Unix environment. Uh, the point is that all devices, both physical and virtual, uh, are accessed queried and well, can be modified uh, from, well, from, from a uniform set of commands, uh, which allows you to have a full control of uh, gathering data, processing data. You can tune the data with the same set of commands, uh, regardless, regardless of it, if it is, it is a hard drive, uh, Ethernet adapter, uh, fiber channel adapter, or whatever. Uh, um, it also has a clear device hierarchy, which means that uh, there, are, there is a hi clear hierarchy of uh, parent and child nodes, parent and child devices. Uh, well, we already have that in FreeBSD, well, Newbus gives us also a clear hierarchy, and FreeBSD has a DevInfo tool which can display this hierarchy, uh, but, uh, well, mm, the info is just a tool to display, and with IIX you can do quite a lot of things. I can I will show you show you an example in a moment. Uh, 
I really, what I really liked in AIX is persistent device naming. Uh, this means that AIX, once, once AIX sees a div given device, particular device like an Ethernet adapter or a particular hard drive, it, it remembers it and it assigns it a unique number like, like a disk zero or a disk eleven or whatever, and regardless of the hardware modifications you do to the system, well, like removing the adapter or modifying it or whatever, uh, the, devi the, the device number will be will persist over the reboots over system reconfigurations. Uh, and this is achieved to the so-called ODM uh, storage. ODM stands for Object Data Manager. It's a binary database, similar, quite, little similar to the Windows registry, uh, but uh, it has a little, a little different role. And every time IIX is a new device, uh, it configures it and assigns drivers to it and stuff like that. And then it stores all the device info in the ODM database, uh, which can, of course, be modified. Uh, the ODM, and, well, all devices can be in three states in the system, which is available, which means that the device is there and it's responding and it's live. Uh, the device can be stopped, which means the device is turned off, but it's not uh, disconnected. And you can perform some tasks on it, or like firmware upgrade or similar tasks. And the device can be defined, which means that the device is not there, but the system remembers it and knows that this particular device was in the system. And when the device reappears, for whatever the reason is, it, it has gone, uh, the, the system will recognize it, most likely, and assign it the same, the same device number it already had. Uh, there's also a comprehensive list of tools which uh, allow you to, mon to uh, process the devices and uh, manipulate them. Uh, the tool is, is here. I hope you can read it. Uh, I can get later into it in describing every what what uh, every, every every one of these tools does, but uh, right now I'd like to show you some example. Uh, I hope that's visible. Is it? No, no. Mm. That's not good. Okay, maybe I can show you it here. Okay, here's an example of LSD dev command, uh, which displays me all the devices in the in the in the main form, and I would like to query it on for hard drives. Uh, and I can see that I have only one hard drive, which is a disk zero. Uh, is it visible this time? Okay, that's good. And I can uh, ask ask it to provide me some. Uh, information on this device. Okay, so I can see that uh, there is a device path for it. Uh, which is some kind of unique uh, specific uh, hardware specific device path. In this particular case, it's a virtual drive, which means that uh, it's uh, well, it's part of the power virtualization framework. So I'm not going to get into it. And you can also uh, take a look at the tunables for this drive. Uh, which you can see there are quite a few of them, and you can modify some of these, and well, you can change them or, or not. You can Some of them persist between reboots and some not. Okay, but back to the presentation. Uh, it's really too bad that you, you cannot read it, but well, sorry. Uh, okay, so why would I see it in FreeBSD, and what improvements can we get in? 
Uh, well, first of all, I'm not really a big fan of uh, those tools syntax. I mean, the common line syntax, I think it can be clearer and better, but that's just, just some aesthetics. Uh, well, mm, I already mentioned the persistent device names, and uh, actually, uh, you would have to, in FreeBSD, uh, have two device namespaces because the kernel has the own, its own uh, device namespace, which is actually the current one used and visible to the system. And in order to maintain the persistent de device names, uh, the system would have to store the device names somewhere in its configuration, which means that the kernel while booting wouldn't have to access to it. Uh, so it, it would require two namespaces which with probably some different paths, but uh, it can be achieved, I guess. Uh, and the point is that uh, with uh, integrated device management, you can uh, integrate the functionality of commands devinfo, uh, PCI conf, ATA control, CAM control, USB devs, or USB config, depending on the FreeBSD version and stuff like that, into just one one or two big comments or quite a few comments which would uh, be able to rescan everything and uh, apply, ch apply changes to any kind of device. Um, this would be particularly useful for hot plugging devices which um, would relieve you to would relieve you from remembering what kind of device is, is that is it or an ATA drive or uh, SCSI drive or fiber channel, well, fiber, fiber channel is not too well supported, but maybe in the future, or USB drive um, with a uniform comment for that, you would be able to take a look at every kind of device out there and modify any kind of device out there. And actually, this, it has helped me quite a lot. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> The next thing I would like to present you is the so-called SMIT. Uh, is the, this is the almighty system administration tool. Um, you may be familiar with some other tools like that. Uh, for example, with uh, Yast on SUSE Linux or maybe other, other tools. Uh, the point is that you, it provides you a menu-driven interface for most of the tasks that you would uh, perform on the administrative tax tasks you would perform on the operating systems and uh, the real power of this of SMIT is uh, well there are, few, there are quite a few it's built on top of normal commands most of the time so you can take a look, look what command is, is going to be uh, launched and what <coughs> you can learn the command and actually it allows you to explore the system and make yourself familiar with different kind of kinds of commands uh, I can show you in the moment how it looks. So, mm. as you see, it's many driven. Uh, you, you can <clears throat> you can see that there are quite a few fields here. Uh, well, you can let's go for users. For example, I can add a user here. Well, with some username, whatever, and. And this is actually the comment that is going to be executed, uh, which is, well, it's a shell script. And most, most importantly, it's an mkuser comment with some arguments. So let's give it a try. Ah, OK. It's gone. Ah, it's, it can be tricky sometimes. So in this quite a simple manner, I can add a user, and it's already there. As you can see, there is one new user. And well, pretty much every kind of administrative task can be achieved with this uh, SMIT interface. And there's also a graphical interface for it, but I actually never used it, and I didn't see anyone ever using it. Uh, mm. Like I said, it's built on the top of normal comments, which you can take a look at and learn the system. And 
I find it very useful for, uh, well, first of all, for novices who don't remember every single comment out there for various tasks. And you don't have to remember it. You can just browse through the menus and, well, find the particular, particular task you are going to perform. And it also relieves you when you forget something and you really not, don't, don't want to dig through the manual pages, which can be quite complicated, as you probably know. And, well, maybe from, through some configuration files, which also can get complicated. Uh, well, most of the uh, simple tasks can be achieved with Smith. Um, Smith also relies on this uh, registry-like ODM database. Uh, but most of the time, it, it uses uh, external comments to access the database, which means that external comments, like device management comments, rely on the ODM and database. From time to time, it accesses the ODM database by itself. Um, and the other very cool feature of Smith is that uh, external packages, regardless of the source, regardless of the uh, actual provider, uh, can add its own, their own extensions to Smith which means that I, when you install, for example, Apache, uh, the Apache package can uh, install uh, some, of, some, of, some of its own menus and comments into the Smith interface, and it will appear in the Smith menu, and you can well, administrate uh, Apache with Smith, uh, which you would, could, wouldn't be able to do it before, before it, you install the package. Uh, this is a Smith example, and I already showed you, so. You don't have to look, take look at it. Um, uh, how would like to see it in FreeBSD? Well, I don't really like the idea of the binary database. Well, Slavek Jack disagrees with me, but uh, well, it's not very important to make this ma make that statement right now. Uh, uh, I would really prefer it to depend solely on simple command line tools. Uh, I don't exactly like the way <clears throat> that Smith uses some extensive shell scripting for some comments because they are quite hard to read and they are not very educational. Uh, but because I um, consider Smith mostly an educational tool, uh, well, it's very good, of course, for novices to make themselves familiar with the system. Uh, so <clears throat> you can give the system to some fresh guy and make him study and it's instead of studying hard books and stuff like that you can you can give him a live system and he's gonna learn the easy way okay and well the other thing is that uh, Smith well may enforce the good habits which means that uh, Smith uh, will perform some tasks in the way they are supposed to be because we're gonna, we can write it make it so and we'll, uh, well New users uh, won't uh, invent their own ways of doing things, but they can take a look on of how it's how is it supposed to be done. So well, it's also educational. Okay, so uh, next I'm gonna to, uh, get to tell, tell a few words about package management. Uh, there's actually just one feature that I find particularly useful, uh, and that is the state of the package. Uh, the package can be committed, which means the package is installed and all the changes are final. And all the package can be applied, which means that the package is installed, it's perfectly functional, uh, but you can revert to the old package anytime because the package is saved in some other place that can be accessed and, well, extracted. Of course, you can achieve it with uh, current FreeBSD package tools, like uh, you can archive uh, any package that is installed and will use the package later. Uh, but this procedure is quite automatic and, uh, well, doesn't require you to uh, maintain your own uh, package database well, and old package database. Uh, and it also allows you to perform uh, massive updates and if something goes wrong, you can revert back. So, well, it helps, helps on upgrades, certainly. Uh, and the way I'd see it, I would, because FreeBSD in the base system doesn't have a really good uh, package management, management system and package upgrade system, I would actually see it built into a port, port upgrade or port master. That's, that's just a suggest, suggestion. Okay, so uh, another cool tool is a tool called MKSSB, 
Uh, it's a, a backup and an archive tool. Uh, uh, well, uh, as an introduction, I would like to um, tell you that uh, Ix has a term called has, has a, a good habit of uh, installing the whole system on a volume group group called rootvg, which is the the volume group that the, all the other system uh, binaries are installed, uh, and it also encourages users to users to. Mm, create their own volume groups for other devices and for other data they would actually use on the system. So the, mm, most of the time you can rely on the assumption that uh, rootvg contains only the system, not the data, uh, unless someone wants it the other way, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and MCASSB is a command which allows you to create an archive from the whole system, from the whole root VG. You can add exceptions. You can, it doesn't mean you have to put all the data, but uh, it processes the whole root VG uh, well, volume, vo volume group with all the file systems in it. And it creates an image file. It can be used, it can be created as a bootable file which you can boot from network using some uh, other IBM's facilities and you can use you can boot it from a, a tape you can boot it from a CD and uh, it you can either make it consider it as a system backup uh, which means you can um, archive the whole system and store it in some safe place in case of something goes wrong and use another backup me mechanism for data and on the other hand, it, it's, very, it's very useful for cloning the system uh, because, well, let's say you have some customized systems, which means that not everything you installed is in a, in a package and not everything you have installed is official or anything. And uh, MCASSB allows you to clone the whole system. It's package agnostic, which means that it doesn't care whether any file is in, pa in a package or not. Uh, uh, so you can prepare the image and install it on any number of machines. Uh, when you boot a new MCASS image, you have a menu which allows you to perform some basic configurations, uh, configuration tasks for the systems. For, for the system, which means you can set a new host name, your new IP, new a few things. Uh, but most of the system data will be preserved. Uh, this is MCASSB example, but as no, it's not very clear. I'm gonna just tell you that uh, here you, you, you launch the MCASSB command. There are some comments that saying that the system is being dumped, that it cannot process some uh, slash var slash something directory, which is harmless. And then the system is, well, sorry. Uh, and here the system is uh, being created and then there's a ISO image written from this MCASIS, MCASIS, MCASIS image which you can use to, you can burn it and you can boot from it anywhere or on any power machine you, you would like would like to. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> another cool tool both for system upgrading and for system cloning is the set of, set of scripts called ALS disk something. Uh, which is which stands for Aldisk in Aldisk copy and Aldisk MCASSB, uh, and the idea is also a root VG manipulation. Uh, like you see, the root VG is quite important for AX, and uh, create well. What it does, it uh, copies the current root VG uh, onto the other device, which can be also a um, device you use for mirroring, you can split the mirror and copy, uh, well, it, and uh, create a copy, working copy of the root VG. And it allows you to uh, perform some upgrade or administration tasks on the new root VG uh, without disrupting the uh, original root VG operation, which means you can perform an upgrade while the system is running and without the system noticing at all, and uh, of course, except for some performance issues, but it's a different story. Uh, uh, it's all, uh, well, all, 
everything is actually performed by LVM operations, all the VG splitting and creation of a new uh, VG. Uh, the, um, th those two comments, uh, what they do is to cre they create a new uh, volume group, which can be later used as a root VG group. And the, sc the scripts are, uh, provide you an automatic, automatic uh, interface to uh, create a new root VG, make it bootable, uh, make the system aware that it's going to be, I mean, the system BIOS. It's not bio, exactly BIOS in AX, but uh, it's similar. Uh, aware of the new root VG and aware that it, on the next boot, you would have to boot from the other, uh, other device and the other hard drive. And it's just one comment for that. Uh, um, I didn't mention that you can also use uh, MCASSB image to, from, to, to create a new, new VG for, from the script, which is also convenient in case you want to <coughs> use this image. And uh, the really core feature of the script is that it's fully automated because it's nothing exactly revolutionary in it, but uh, if you wouldn't have the script, you would actually have to use quite a few uh, system manipulation comments, uh, which are prone to mistakes and, well, um, may not exactly be helpful. And now you have one comment that just does it all and you don't have to most of the time, well, provided that it doesn't have bugs, um, but you don't have to worry about the syntaxes of different comments and not making mistakes and stuff like that. Uh, well, the, of, of the, the other cool particular feature of this comment is that it allows you to upgrade the system uh, without any disturbance and then after the upgrade is complete you just reboot the system and the new upgraded system should be alive and working, at least in theory. Uh, like I said, it's, it's a set of comments. Uh, I'll, disc, I'll disc copy copies the, the current running root VG into the new root VG. I'll disk MCASSB copies the MCASSB image into the, into the new root VG. And alt root VG op performs some operations on the already created alternative root VG, so called. So you can delete it, you can roll, roll, the, roll the changes back in case something goes wrong uh, because the old VG is preserved. And after you reboot into a new, new VG, you can see the old VG as the, the old root VG as old root VG. You can revert, to the, revert the changes in case anything goes wrong. Uh, on FreeBSD, you can. We, we, we could uh, use uh, similar to LVM mechanism of the ZFS file system uh, to provide similar scripts. And like, like I said, they are only scripts, but they are pretty cool. Um, this is just one another me mechanism to create, to perform system upgrades and or back the changes if necessary. Uh, and the last thing, um, we're going to talk about as the facility that also Slovak like suggested me. I wasn't exactly uh, convinced that it's so cool, but maybe it's worth not noting. Uh, uh, the, the, this thing is uh, the AIX logging facility. Uh, it's not syslog, uh, which means that it's separate from syslog and it can operate independently. It actually does. And uh, it's used, used solely for error logging. Uh, there are two basic comments you would actually use is, and one of them is RPT, which prints the current system log, system error log, and you can clear the entries with R clear. And what's particularly cool about it is not that it provides you a yet another uh, error logging mechanism, but it can based on templates, which means that uh, for each a uh, new entry and uh, the system checks whether the event is registered as a, some kind of non-event and then can perform some various tasks based, based on what kind of the uh, event is that and uh, can provide you additional data like uh, analyzing a core dump or analyzing some device state in case of a device error uh, or analyze what ha what exactly happened and what is the current system state in case of well some global failure. Uh, so it's well you can actually script anything you'd like to there. 
so like I said, it's not just logging because we already have syslog and it's not interesting to log anything more. Uh, but it's also an uh, analysis tool and uh, allows you to manipulate the entries. Uh, well, this is an example. Uh, I would, because you cannot see anything, I can show it here. So in this case, uh, there are quite a few entries in the system log. Uh, which are not exactly particularly interesting, but let's take a look and, uh, at, the, at the first one. Oh, sorry. Okay, so you can see detailed log entry output. Uh, okay, it says it's a core dump. It provides you some information on what kind of machine is it, was it running and what kind of uh, problem uh, actually happened here. Uh, in this case, it was software program abnormally terminated. Actually, I killed the process with uh, segment with, with six seg, but uh, it can be a, quite a, quite a few different things there. And it also tries to uh, recommend some solutions to fix it and to determine what caused, caused the problem. And as you can see, it tries to analyze the, uh, analyze the core dump for, from, 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 from this uh, segmentation violation. And it tries to, well, give you some idea what has happened. And, okay, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, uh, well, what it does and what it, uh, well, we already, we already have syslog with error logging facility. So uh, this would allow us to have some other tool which would um, make, uh, which would be a quick way to assess the health of the system and uh, check what's going on in the system in terms of stability and errors. And it's particularly convenient because uh, the entries in the error log are, are dynamic, which means you can delete, delete the entries. And well, you can, well, deleting you can, you can just it can just mean that uh, you consider the task resolved or bogus. Well, there are quite a few bogus errors can appear. Uh, uh, the template mechanism is quite, is quite powerful because you can uh, enhance your error logging mechanism with some analysis, analysis uh, data, uh, and you can, uh, well, analyze the dumps later. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, we have seven minutes of free time, so it's question time. Regarding, r regarding the integrated configuration utilities, uh, where, where you suggest uh, merging IF config, USB config, Ata control and, and a whole bunch of configuration utilities for specific use uh, subsystems. Uh, how, are, who's going to take initiative? Or, or do you want to take initiative to start such a project, or, or is it just proposing the idea? And, and well, like, like I said, I'm proposing the ideas. I mean, in the particular case of if EF config, I'm not so sure that it can be easily integrated, and as it is quite a uh, well, old and known to, I wouldn't get rid of it. Uh, but uh, well, it's a good idea, and it's I'm presenting it. And it's currently as an idea, maybe something else later. Okay, thank you. Uh, Uh, in the document, in the presentation document, I have also provided some links. If in case you are more curious about AX and want to learn more, so I know that you cannot see it, but it's in the presentation on the MidBSD web, web page. So I can, I think you can access it. <laughs> 